and this is where my first shop used to be that spot there and that spot there it's pretty interesting all right this would be the second warehouse this guy has been here since I was there he's grown his business quite a bit but this used to be the second warehouse. Let me take you around to the first warehouse. So, we used to have the warehouse down there. I think that's still the people who make the dirty toys. And I think this one is empty. But we started off here in this warehouse. And then we went ahead and moved and bought some more warehouses. <laughs> They're still in there. That's kind of wild. And this is something relatively new. We used to have this warehouse down here. This warehouse is that door, that door, and these two doors. And that warehouse is 10,000 square feet. And the smaller warehouses, 3,000 square feet. The one that we got started in. But this is where we <laughs> did a lot of stuff. And there's something going on here. It's kind of wild. And this is where we used to be once we get out of the garages. I just went over there. Um, it's been years since I've been out here. I think it's shut down because it's empty. It's closed. There's no signage. But yeah. This is where we were before we got to the storefronts. Before we got to all of the other stuff that we had. This used to be a bunch of thrift stores in this Dollar General. <laughs> I just went in there and got some stuff. This Dollar General has been here for six years, so I don't even know what happened to the people who used to be here. But you see those two browns? That was another store over there, and that's where our store was. This was the most expensive location that we had, and we didn't do any sales. And this is one of the things that's kind of crazy. You can stand out here and you can see a ton of traffic. I mean, you can see a serious amount of traffic, but they did not come into the store. What we got into the store were people from Craigslist or other online marketing situations. And it was funny because, uh, that area looked to be a lot bigger than it looks now. But that was the most expensive rent that we were paying. And um, it was very, very disappointing. Extremely disappointing. All right. So one of the things I did today, you can see the warehouse. I'm back at the warehouse. Is I went around and I looked at how I got started. I looked at the places I got started and it's been years, years since I've been out here. And the thing is business goes on, even though I left this spot, someone else is in it. But <clears throat> one of the things that I wanted to really break into is how I got started going from the house, to the flea market, to the those stores, and all the lessons that I learned are kind of mind blowing because as I sit here and as I look at this, all of this was informational building stuff. Um, going from the house to the flea market, from the flea market to the storefronts, 
to starting in that first warehouse, then going down to the bigger warehouse, then getting a, another warehouse in the rear. It was, you know, it was growth. And this is one of the things that I just don't really see with, and let me be really clear, content creation has been going on since the Great Depression. Radio shows, television shows, concerts, songs, content creation is an extremely valuable business model. What I'm seeing on YouTube is the push for content creation by people who really don't have anything to push. And, you know, once again, content creation is a very value. It's a multi-trillion dollar business, content creation. But how many people want to see you in your kitchen talking about the coffee you're going to drink for the day? You know, that kind of stuff. But one of the, the, the difference between building this in content creation is there's a bunch of people you have to really touch basis with, communicate with, talk with. And, you know, I remember there was a guy, he's no longer there. Uh, I actually talked to him. Someone else is in that warehouse. And the guy who built all this stuff, Mr. Arbizer, he's he's gone. He 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 was like, I think 93, 94 when he died. He built the him and another guy pretty much built most of Mountain Industrial. And when you start to go back and you look into the building of a fortune, because, you know, I, I'll share my rent check. My rent check was made out to his trust for his two kids it was in his son's name and it was in his daughter's name. And these buildings and stuff, he built them. There's never been in my estimation. I really don't know, but I don't think there's ever been a mortgage on this building. And when you get into doing this and, you know, I, I show you this, th this stuff is not like that. It's not that popular in this warehouse. The best weekend ever was $24,000 for me putting signs up in there on the yard and around the corner by the quick trip. And it was two days, 24,000. I had bought some really, really good units. I had a lot of good stuff to sell. And that happened here. And, you know, once again, it, like I said, it's, it's, this is not pretty. It is not pretty. It's, it, it isn't even close to pretty or attractive or and once again this building over here um that used to be a totally different business now above all cleaning restoration they got a lot of stuff going on they have a lot of vehicles and stuff but i'm just saying the biggest goal you guys have is to literally get started that's the biggest goal you have because I, I I remember how we just got started, started selling in the garage, then moved to the flea markets, then moved to the storefronts, which incidentally was a mistake. Uh, remember the storefront in Stone Mountain? It was the it, it was like twenty five hundred bucks per month, and only sales we made were the sales from Craigslist. And, you know, it, it got me to thinking. Now, the Brockett Plaza, we actually would get... Now, th this is one of the things that would happen, and this is one of the businesses I, I went through. When we would put a lot of stuff outside, we would get a lot of foot traffic. We get a lot of people stopping by, coming in. And the, uh, the cab police, they didn't like that. So it was like, you can't put this stuff out here. And it, it just, it, it was just this battle it was just this battle between business and the county and stuff and 
And that's why I said, hey, let's shut both storefronts down and move everything to the warehouse because I had knowledge, I had intimate knowledge that the majority of our sales were coming from our online ads. So it didn't really matter if the stuff was here in the warehouse or it was a storefront. And one of the things that happened, I remember uh, my partner and I, you know, uh, the the place that's the Dollar General, I don't even know that Dollar General has been there six years. I don't even know if the woman who, I have no clue to the mechanics or how that went down, but that was our worst performing store and that was our most expensive store. And I remember we shut it down. I remember loading everything in the truck, bringing it to the warehouse. And then I remember going to the other storefront and literally it took maybe six, seven hours to clean that store out and to clean that store out, bring it all to the warehouse and put it in a manner where it was presentable. And our revenue quadrupled. We, 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 we five X our revenue because number one, no one had to be in the store. You know, being in the store, that was one of the worst parts of this whole thing for me. It was just, it was terrible. It was really, really terrible. And, you know, after, and it didn't all, the, the quadrupling didn't happen overnight. It was about, I'm going to say about six months for it to happen. Because the first month we didn't have that place down there was 1500 the Stone Mountain place was twenty five hundred, so that was four thousand dollars that immediately got pulled out of the acquisition phase. Plus, we had a full time employee and everything, so shutting down those stores saved us about sixty five hundred. And then the second month is when we started to see the turn, because I didn't. Because one of the things that was um, interesting was I had to make sure I would send people to the right store and make sure that someone would be at the store. And and once we got rid of that, it was just like, hey, meet you at the warehouse, meet you at the warehouse. And one of the things that really happened because this warehouse was 3,000 square feet. And when we moved to the bigger warehouse, which is that one down there, that's when... Because once we, because we were buying so much and we had that bigger space. So literally we moved from this warehouse to that warehouse pretty much the same time that we shut down the stores. And then we got the rear warehouse probably a month later. And one of the things that would happen is people would come in from Craigslist. There was no Facebook marketplace. There was only Craigslist and eBay. That's only in Amazon, but we wouldn't advertise where we were on eBay and Amazon. You know, every now and then somebody from eBay would come pick something up if we were selling something exotic, but people would come to look at what they saw on Craigslist and they would see all this other stuff. And I cannot count how many times someone came to buy one thing and they would leave with three things or four things or five things or six things or 10. I remember, and I, I will never forget this little lady. This little lady, she was um, between Oriental and Korean because she was clearly foreign. I don't know. Very little woman. She comes in. She's looking for a living room set. So she comes in and we had, at the time, we probably had like 10 living room sets and we had probably 12 bedroom sets. And she came in and she's like, oh, you have a lot. And she's like, I want this sofa. And she just literally walked around the warehouse. I want this. And I just had a little sticky pad and I wrote sold, 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 sold. And this woman had cash. How can I help you? This woman had cash. She bought $8,000 worth of stuff. She bought a living room set, a dining room set, 
not one, not two, but three bedroom sets, a washer and dryer, and some other things that she got. And one of the things that I found to be very interesting about her, uh, I'm trying to turn that off because I don't need that. Uh, one of the things I found very interesting about her and, you know, cause she was, you know, she, she wasn't haggling. She's like, your prices are real good. And she's like, can I have it all delivered the same day? And I, I had already texted my delivery guy and he was on his way to the warehouse and he literally, we loaded up that stuff. She bought it and had it all delivered the same day. And that happened over and over and over and over again. Once we centralized everything where people could just not just come in and look at one thing, they will look at multiple things. And like I said, man, the hardest thing is getting started with your business. Once you get started and you start pushing and pushing and pushing, because I was sitting there, like I called my partner up and I was like, you would not believe what just happened. And I was like, this lady, she came in, she's looking for a living room set. Guess how much stuff she bought? And my partner was like, oh, she bought, you know, this, this, this. She's like, she bought 3,000, she bought 4,000. I was like, nope. She bought 5,000. I was like, nope. This woman bought $8,000 for her stuff had the cash on her and Tom actually came to the warehouse, picked it up and is on his way to deliver it to her wherever she, she lives. She was blown away. And that started to happen over and over and over and over and over because we were centralized. And this is one of the things because um, I deleted the video, but one of the things is you, you just want to be as centralized as possible because this is one of the things that just taught me the importance of structure, organization, and setup. Because we made millions of dollars out those warehouses. So once again, I got some other stuff that's coming the 1st of March. Be on the lookout for it. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell notification thing. I'll see you guys in the next one.